I just want to share a few uh, remarks and comments about what the police bureau is doing this weekend. And um, I'm glad to have uh, SAC Ramsey here from the FBI as well. So this weekend, the Portland Police Bureau is taking part in a larger coalition involving community groups, city bureaus, and law enforcement to address gun violence. As we saw in Gresham last month, where seven people were shot at a vigil for a gun violence victim, um, there are several vigils and funerals planned for Portland in the upcoming days as well. Um, these vigils are credible targets for further violence, and our goal is really to de-escalate and lower the tensions in the community that are fueling this uh, latest spate of gun violence that we're having. Uh, we've received some alarming information um, that's been shared with uh, not only the city, but some of our community partners as well, that there are groups uh, coming to Portland to engage in gun violence from out of town. Um, and also that uh, folks are being um, encouraged to do some retaliatory shootings um, in the next 30 days as a, a form of loyalty for some shootings that have happened before. So we wanna make sure that we, the police bureau in conjunction with our partners are doing everything that we can to keep the community safe. Um, there's a, a cycle of violence here that we're trying to break. There's um, you know, retaliation and things of that nature that we're really concerned about, which is driving the, uh, the actions that we're gonna take this weekend. So we're collaborating closely with the Office of Violence Prevention, the Portland Office of the FBI, Multnomah County District Attorney, um, several other community-based organizations um, in an effort to really uh, de-escalate and provide safety this weekend. Uh, our community safety director, Mike Myers, is overseeing this effort and we're happy for his assistance. Uh, and this is really just part of a larger effort that we're, we're engaging in. And we're doing our part to reassure the community that we want people to feel safe, uh, to be able to go out and grieve and heal in a safe manner. Uh, we'll be out, out providing a high visibility presence and a deterrent to those who would come here and commit crimes. And uh, I, I want to make sure people know that our, our goal is a, a message of safety. We want people to know that we're going to be doing our part to keep the community safe. Uh, we want people who would come here and engage in gun violence to know that we will be out and we will be um, active and we'll be looking to hold people who, who do shootings to account. That's all I have. Thanks, Kevin. Okay, thanks, Chief. Uh, then uh, I'll hand it over for a statement from the Special Agent in Charge of Oregon, Kieran Ramsey. Great, thank you, and thank you for having us today. Uh, I'm certainly happy and proud to be here side by side, at least virtually, uh, with Chief Lavelle, our, our good friend and partner. Uh, here's the bottom line. Uh, this is beyond a public safety crisis now. We said it was a public safety crisis three months ago. And unfortunately, this trend of gun violence in the metro area has continued. Uh, we've tried some innovative things of forming this Metro Safe Streets Task Force and really trying to enhance our investigative posture, both in response to ongoing shootings or recent shootings, but also to get ahead of them to prevent the next shooting. Unfortunately, you know, one shooting is too many, and that would have started, you know, at the beginning of the year at this point. So we are now in a crisis mode where we are trying to call upon all of our partners. All of us in law enforcement certainly agree partnership has to be the way that we address this from our perspective. But that partnership needs to go beyond law enforcement. So we're essentially pleading with community groups, with faith-based groups, with elected leaders, with anybody out there that can have a way to get in front of the person that may pick up that gun and either commit retaliatory violence or indiscriminate violence and get them to put it down. We need to break this cycle of violence. So what is the FBI doing in this regard through the Metro Safe Streets Task Force? I think as you've heard before, we're going to be paired up with the Enhanced Community Safety Team. We were last night, we will be through the weekend so that we will coordinate with on-scene supervisors when there is a shooting incident to respond, to gather as much information, evidence, uh, witness statements as possible so that we can pursue those leads right then and there and have no delay in our investigation so that hopefully we can identify the people involved and hopefully put a stop from them committing another act of violence. 
what we saw earlier in this week where it wasn't just one or two or three or four shootings, but even more, we can't have. This area, this city, you know, the metro area is not supposed to be this way. We all agree that it's, it's an obvious statement to make. But now it's at the point that if we don't all step up together, law enforcement does its role partnering together. Law enforcement partners with the community and the community does its role partnering together. Hopefully we can put a stop to that. So again, we will be out there with our partners with Portland Police Bureau, Multnomah County Sheriff's, Gresham PD, whomever, wherever we hear a, a shot uh, or shot incident or shooting incidents to make sure that we can pursue that investigation immediately. And again, hopefully put a stop to this. Thanks. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, appreciate that. Uh, and now is a chance for us to open it up to questions. Um, and the first one, I don't see your full name. It's just kind of a username. So um, <laughs> whoever's It's uh, Christelle with KGW. Oh, hi. hi. Thanks. Okay, hi. go ahead with your question. <laughs> so I just had a quick question because earlier this morning, there was a, a shooting up in um, 119th and Stark. Was the coalition involved in that uh, investigation, in that process? So our, our team of ECST and our FBI partners, we're looking at all the shootings from this weekend together. Um, our goal is to, like uh, SAC Ramsey said, really get speed to lead. So we can really uh, look at these as they happen and get investigators on top of the information as quickly as possible. So any, any shootings this weekend, we'll have our folks on top of it. And uh, we'll move forward kind of in this partnership to really jumpstart these investigations. Okay, thanks. And um, I'm checking to see uh, if FBI was on scene for this morning shooting. Um, I'm not 100% sure if they were there today. Uh, I, I don't, I know that we're tracking it. I'm not sure if my, uh, if one of my agents was was with one of the officers there, but uh, we're certainly aware of it. Uh, I yeah. certainly got a report of it this morning. Okay, yeah, that one happened at seven something in the morning this morning. So it was a little outside of what we've seen uh, with the evening events. So uh, moving on then, the next question comes from Bridget Chavez. Bridget, go ahead with your question. Sure, um, so this is either for, either for either of you. Um, we did have that shooting this morning and then another one. Um, and we know that this team is in place to help as a deterrent, but we're still seeing these shootings. Can you be more specific about what you guys are doing to act as a deterrent? Because we still had two shootings this morning. Yeah, that's a fair question. And, and let, let's be honest, we're not gonna be able to deter every shooting or prevent every shooting or be on the scene of every shooting. Um, we're gonna do our best to be uh, visible, be active, um, I think for us, we want to be information and intelligence led, and we want to use that information and intelligence to try to prevent the next shooting. Um, and, you know, we're talking about eight officers, I think three FBI agents, and the ability to call in more should uh, the situation dictate that. But I think, you know, for, for the amount of shootings that we've seen, you know, we're just trying to use our resources to the, you know, their best use possible to try to keep these shootings from escalating um, even further. I would, I would add to that, Chief. You know, the high visibility presence obviously is, is hopefully some measure of deterrent. But as, as he already said, it's not always going to be effective because some people are just intent on committing some act of violence, whether they've seen the police recently or they just saw them or they know that we're out there. So that's where the secondary phase of this deterrent, knowing that not only are we out there, but immediately we're following up on these leads, being intelligence driven, and then hopefully circling back around to that person or persons that were either involved in the previous shooting, or perhaps maybe are involved in a planned retaliatory act of violence. Um, that doesn't happen immediately though, that effective deterrence of the investigation phase is going to take a day or two or three or four. Um, so we're hoping both of those. And again, in effect though, it's not just a visible deterrence that we wanna have. 
We want to actually have results. We want to take shooters off the street. We want to take the guns out of their hands. All right, thank you. I see there's uh, some folks uh, with questions in the chat. So I think what we'll do, we'll do Jim Redden next, Megan Allison, and then we'll go to Michael Russell from the Oregonian. Uh, so Jim Redden, you're next up. Go ahead with your question, sir. Thank you. Could you be a little more specific about who these groups are that are coming to town? You're using the term groups. Are these gangs? I would say these are gang-related shootings and gang-related retaliation. I mean, we've seen, um, you know, throughout the course of the summer uh, when shootings have risen, and, and I'll give you just some, some context of the amount of shootings we've seen just in the past uh, two weeks. Uh, we were in homicides. We're at 31 homicides for the year. This time last year, we were at four. Uh, this time in 2019, we're at three. So it gives you a sense of kind of the, the scope and scale of what we're dealing with as far as shootings. Um, just since May 1st, we've had 40 shots fired calls, um, 231 casings that have been flying through the streets of our community, uh, four homicides and 14 people injured in those shootings. So, you know, I think when I look at it as um, these gang related shootings with retaliation, that's what's so um, so troubling because you have the potential for um, one shooting becoming two, becoming three. Um, and th that's really the, the worry for us. And, and perhaps I would add that, you know, this is where the FBI is going to try and provide that investigative support, um, as opposed to uh, looking at these as singular incidents, making sure we're exploring, are these possibly connected? And that's where it comes also to seeing if there's any appropriate nexus to federal violations of criminal law. In fact, if we see gang members traveling here from out of state, certainly that automatically gives us uh, a federal nexus. But uh, again, even gang members that are involved locally in criminal activity, let alone shootings, um, certainly gives us that federal nexus as well. And then we have a conversation after that uh, between ourselves, uh, the Multnomah County District Attorney and the U.S. Attorney to find where the best venue is but all with the hope that we're identifying these people immediately or perhaps before that shooting occurs. Okay, thanks for the question. Uh, moving on to Megan Allison. Uh, when you're ready, unmute and go ahead. Hi there, thank you. Um, so you mentioned that this partnership exists as a short-term solution. Does your bureau feel equipped to handle the current level of violence in the weeks and months ahead? You know, the Bureau is pretty lean just in general. As you know, we've moved a lot of our resources to address gun violence. Uh, the, our partnership with the MOU with the FBI is uh, one step in that effort. Um, you know, for us, we've looked for ways to add to our gun violence response. And, um, you know, up until this point, we've had to take um, those resources that we have existing and, and shift them to to gun violence. And I think for us, if the, if the gun violence continues at this um, rate, we're gonna have to look really hard at what ways we're gonna, um, we're gonna address it as far as if it's more resources, more officers, uh, more partnerships or things of that nature. But I think right now, really, we're relying on our partnerships with community-based organizations, um, local law enforcement and our federal partners. Okay, uh, next question is coming from Michael Russell at the Oregonian. Go ahead, Michael, when you're ready. Hi, Chief Lavelle, this question's for you. Um, I'm just wondering how the response this weekend um, differs specifically uh, in terms of numbers of officers or uh, uh, whether they're uniformed or not compared to a, a normal weekend. Um, because I know you guys already have uh, existing partnerships with the FBI and, and other law enforcement. Yeah, so this weekend we're going to have an additional um, eight officers from our enhanced community safety team out. Uh, we'll have the ability to call more on an on-call on basis if needed, and we'll have um, FBI resources out with our folks, which is something we haven't seen here um, a lot in the past. And we'll have the ability to call in extra folks 
um, on the FBI side as well. So that would give us a little bit more of a, a presence as far as numbers go. And I think, you know, for us, it's really in light of the information that we're receiving and in light of the concerns that we've been hearing from community um, as well, we want to just make sure we're doing everything in our power to, uh, to contribute to re reducing gun violence and de-escalating over the weekend. Okay, I don't see any uh, other questions. Was there anything else? We have a little bit more time um, today. Megan Allison, looks like your hand is up again. Go ahead with your next question. Hi there, I just was wondering how you plan to look at things from a long-term perspective, addressing this as an ongoing issue. Yeah, for us at PPB, um, we look at it as you know one of some of the most important work that we we do. Um, I've been in a lot of conversations with um, elected leaders, community folks, and I, I've always said that this you know keeping people in our community alive and safe from gun violence is important. I will shift resources as needed to make sure that we can address it as, as possible, but. Um, if it continues at this rate, I think there has to be some real conversation about what is the appropriate resource, what is the appropriate structure um, to really keep people alive. That's what we're talking about. Uh, 231 bullets flying through the streets of Portland in a, essentially a two week period is just not acceptable. And if it, if it becomes an issue where we need more resources, I'm happy to, to go back and try to fight that fight. But um, to me, you know, we're coming into the summertime which is typically a, a busy time for gun violence. And as we reopen too, as a city, um, you have more gatherings where people are present and uh, we've had uh, a fair amount of shootings that result from those type of gatherings and events too. So I don't know how that will play into the numbers, but it's something we're currently looking at, something we're always really looking at and concerned with. And um, you know, right now it's really very high on our, our list of priorities. Okay, and uh, SEC Ramsey, of course, uh, feel free to hop in if you have anything to add to these answers. Um, Jim Redden is, uh, has his hand up again. Go ahead, Jim. There were a series of vigils planned for Portland Parks uh, to mourn everyone who has died over the past year, including COVID victims, um, ending up with a big one at Pioneer Courthouse Square. Are these among the vigils that you think are potential targets? My, my thought is that those um, are less concerning to us for this type of violence that we're um, that we're speaking about. I think a lot of the the ones we're really concerned with have more to do with the victims of previous uh, gun violence incidents. Okay, thank you for the question. Um, we'll do a last call for uh, any more questions for our group. Uh, Michael Russell, uh, you have another one? Go ahead. Yeah, Chief Lavelle, with, with all these bullets flying around, I'm just curious, um, you know, how much the general public should be concerned for their own safety and also, you know, what they can do to keep themselves safe this weekend. Yeah, I, I would say it's a concern because, um, you know, these bullets are flying around with, uh, you know, essentially no name on them and uh you know you're out and about in certain areas or you know just trying to do your normal day-to-day -day stuff and uh you know bullets are flying around that's definitely a concern um, i think for people it's just really being aware of where you're at um your surroundings uh being careful it's a very difficult thing to predict uh where this gun violence is going to take place but i think just in in general People should just be aware and try to do everything they can to put themselves or ourselves in safe situations. And, and maybe I would add to that, um, we want the community to be reaching out to law enforcement, right? Um, we know that there have been plenty of incidents that have happened where we've had any amount or a tremendous amount of reluctance on the part of people that saw something that don't want to share that with law enforcement. And we know that there are people out in the community right now that know something about some of these shootings and perhaps know something about an individual's plan to commit another shooting beyond that. We need people to reach out to law enforcement. I know that's seemingly sometimes not a popular thing to say, but look, this is where this partnership aspect comes in. 
Uh, law enforcement has to be part of the solution. It's not the only solution here. So we do want people to reach out to law enforcement if they have any information, be it for a prior shooting or God forbid something that's being planned or some individual that is at risk for perhaps being involved in the next shooting. Certainly, I don't care where people call. If they wanna call the Portland Police Bureau or if they live in unincorporated Multnomah County, call the Sheriff's Office or if they're in Gresham, call Gresham PD. Or if you wanna call the FBI with information, certainly you can call us uh, locally for our FBI office here at 503-224-4181. And we can always accept tips online at tips.fbi.gov. But this is where this you know, solicitation, this plea with the community, please reach out to law enforcement, help us stop that next incident, be part of the solution with us. Okay, um, I will uh, wrap it up there. And unless anybody else has a last minute question or statement, they're welcome to join in. Okay, with that, uh, thank you everyone for joining us on the Saturday. If you have any further questions, you can direct them to me at ppbpio at portlandoregon.gov and we'll seek out answers for you. Thanks again. <laughs>